Hmm. How, how y'all doing? This is the first episode of our Wrestle Chat. Talking about wrestling. So last night was a... Uh, what the hell was that pay-per-view called? No Mercy. Among the highlights were... Uh, uh, what the hell? I can't remember. I didn't want... I missed the pre-show. Um, the championship match was actually the first one of the night, which is a little odd. Um, you had, uh, yeah, spoilers. I'm giving spoilers just so you know. It's not to say don't watch the matches, but it, it was a good pay-per-view overall. Um... So AJ Styles retained uh, the championship over Dean Ambrose and John Cena. It's a pretty good match for a triple threat match. Um, definitely want to check it out because there's a something a little controversial happened uh, toward the end of it. But you watch the match, you'll find that out. Um, Bray Wyatt. Uh, beat uh, Randy Orton. That was pretty good. Uh, definitely interesting. Especially the way they're playing mind games with each other. Um, the uh, Dolph Ziggler uh, still a member of the company. He retained the uh, he well he won the uh, Intercontinental Championship from The Miz. Which I like because I do not like The Miz. I have never liked The Miz and I never will. So it's good that he doesn't have the championship anymore. Um, this, this one, uh, this show seems shorter than most of them. Most of them are about three hours. This one's about 20 minutes shorter, shorter than that. I guess it balances out when you, when you count the pre show, but it's usually the show itself that's about three hours. But. All in all, not not bad. Pretty good. Um, those of you that know me know my favorite wrestler is uh, The Undertaker. I just got this from the uh, local dollar, st dollar store yesterday. This is a little Undertaker figure. It's just pretty cool. I have about um, 20 of those in my collection. Wow, more than 20 now. I've also been working on this. I uh, stripped down this old race car, and uh, it's now an Undertaker race car. I just gotta put a number on it. It's about it's about done. Um, it's a uh, sorry about that. Somebody's messaging me on Facebook. Um. It's almost done. It's uh, just basically needs a number, and it needs. Uh, I had a windshield for it, but I don't know where the hell that went. So, doesn't really need one anyway. But I had, <clears throat> I didn't have an interior for it because this one had tinted windows, so it didn't have an interior. So I took one out of a, a busted up model car, and uh, put that in there. It's, not exactly the one that's supposed to be in a race car, but eh, it works. Uh, I like doing things like that. Now, um, next uh, WWE pay-per-view is uh, Hell in a Cell, <clears throat> which is uh, now exclusively to Raw. So uh, since the uh, there was a brand split where they split the brands again back in uh, July so <clears throat> Raw gets the uh, Hell in a Cell pay-per-view so far the only Hell in a Cell match that's been booked for that is uh, Roman Reigns versus Rusev for the US title so that should be good um, supposedly the for the uh, women's championship, there's supposed to be a first ever mat women's match inside the Hell in a Cell. So that would be interesting if it actually, actually happens. But WWE has a tendency to get cold feet, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. 
Now, in my opinion, uh, something like Hell in a Cell, every match at that pay-per-view should be inside the cell. It doesn't make sense to have two or three ma matches in it and then have like the other like five or six not inside the cell. That's stupid. So that that's something that needs to be addressed, definitely. Um, WWE is in the process of buying, or they have bought, um, the uh, TNA tape library. So that means that they will own all the uh, TNA shows and their old pay-per-views and stuff like that. So it's be interesting to see what they do with it. But uh, I don't know if the deal is finalized yet or it's close to being finalized. But either way, WWE is buying it. And uh, <clears throat> TNA was bought by uh, some guy named Billy Corgan. I guess uh, from what I understand, he was a member of the band, the Smashing Pumpkins. I don't really know how he's going to run a wrestling promotion. Especially one that's uh, been struggling. But we'll see, I guess. I mean, quite frankly, I'd watch TNA, but I don't get the channel, so. Whatever. But it's kind of hard to watch things when you don't get the channel. Um. This is going to uh, be uh, WWE 17 coming out soon. Uh, Brock Lesnar's on the cover, so that should be good. I probably, no, well, I won't get it right off. I'll get wait till the price drops down significantly, which with the wrestling games it usually does anyway. Um, so I got a PlayStation 1, a PlayStation 2, and a PlayStation 3, so the only system it'll come out for of those would be the PlayStation 3, maybe. But because the PS4, uh, the Xbox One, and the Wii U are out now, there's no guarantees on that. But, um... Yep. Tape. <laughs> um... The, uh... The other thing I want to mention is that uh, Survivor Series is uh, next month. And uh, the one thing that uh, might happen is that uh, there's a rumor going around that Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar will be the main event. Now, if that's true, that's, that's good because they owe us after 2004. Uh, WrestleMania 20... Uh, 2004, I don't know if, well, if you're a wrestling fan, I'm sure you remember that. Um, but they, re during that match, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the uh, referee. They refused to even lock up because they were both leaving the company. And neither one of them cared. And that was the main event that night. The match should not have been the main event. Um, it's quite frankly one of the wor one of the worst matches I have ever seen. So, uh, neither one refused to do anything, so they owe us a good match. So I'm hoping that if it happens, it, if it doesn't happen in Survivor Series, then it will happen at WrestleMania, most definitely. So that's good. But, uh, yeah, Goldberg, I guess, uh, re-signed uh, with the company finally, so. Um, see, what, see what happens with that. Um, the Undertaker, uh, ever heard from him since uh, WrestleMania, so we don't know what's going on with him or if he's even going to wrestle again. Um, I do know that he left his gloves in the ring after the match at WrestleMania, and, uh, for MMA fighters, that's, uh, sign that they're retired. So, I mean, really, he doesn't really have a lot much to do. I mean, people are saying that they want to see John Cena versus The Undertaker. It was like, 
That match has happened before, okay? It's happened more than once. It just has to happen at WrestleMania. That's a match that should have happened like five or six years ago, but Cena's going to be 40 next year. Taker's going to be 52, I mean. I just think the time for that has passed. And John Cena doesn't even, doesn't seem to have his heart in his heart in it anymore, so. I don't know. I've, uh, I've also heard that it's supposed to wrestle at the Royal Rumble. He's supposed to pop up at the Royal Rumble, so we'll see what happens there. But, I don't know. As far as uh, Triple H, I don't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, haven't heard from Triple. We haven't heard from Triple H in quite a while since he uh, cost uh, Seth Rollins the uh, title. But other than that, he hasn't really done anything. I'm guessing the feud uh, with uh, Seth Rollins may be on the horizon somewhere. But other than that. I don't know what 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 else there's left for Triple H to do either. This Triple H, John Cena, The Undertaker, they've really done everything. Except for breaking, you know, certain records here and there or winning another another championship. There's really not a lot for them to do. It's, you know, you know, put over younger guys, but they've done that for years anyways, I mean Taker could the theoretically be a 20-time champion because uh, he ne during the Monday Night Wars he never strayed from the uh, WWE when well it was the WWF then for WCW or whatever because he could have but he didn't so but he chose to take that and help put over other stars so. He's a seven-time championship, which is, you know, it's it's good. But just just know that he could have been, you know, many more championship many more times over. So, I mean, I don't I don't call him the greatest of all time simply because he's my favorite, but it's because he is the greatest of all time. I mean, he's got the most wins at WrestleMania with 23. Most wins the Survivor Series with 13. Most wins at SummerSlam with 10. Um, for this first uh, two couple years of uh, his career, he was undefeated for nearly two years. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, He's won uh, seven tag team titles, seven world titles, one hardcore title. Um, he's never submitted. There's some. Be there's been some like controversial finishes, a handful of those. But he's never actually physically tapped out. So that's pretty good. Well, it's really good actually. He's also the first to wear in the world Royal Rumble at the uh, the number thirty. In uh, 2007, he hasn't been in a uh, actual Royal Rumble match that I know of since. Well, it's been a while since I, I want to say 2009, maybe 2010, but I think 2009. That's assuming that he was in the Rumble in 2009. I really don't know, but I know he wasn't in uh, 2010 that I know of. And he wasn't in 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. So, and, or this year. So, that'll be the first time in a long time if he's in the uh, 2017 Royal Rumble. It's in Texas. That's where he's from. So, we'll see. But his career's winding down. Um, like I said, he's uh, he's earned his retirement, but my personal opinion, I don't think he should, uh, based on his character, I don't think he should lose his last match. 
And I mean, the streak's already over, so I mean, you know, handing them another loss at WrestleMania, there's, there's no point to that. Nobody's going to have anything to gain from that because they didn't end the streak. They didn't, you know, it's just not going to have the same feel if he loses again at WrestleMania. It's, I mean, he didn't really need to lose the first time. I mean, even Brock Lesnar didn't want to be the one to end the streak, but Vince McMahon, who calls the shots, told him, you know, you have to. And somebody's signing your paycheck, you, you don't really have a choice. But I like I like Brock too. I got nothing against Brock. But they work. Uh, they actually work really well together. I mean, if if Taker went on another run, I'd like to see more matches between him and Brock. I mean, another thing that people say about the Undertaker is that he's too old. I was like, that guy can move around better than the, a lot of the younger guys. So these these younger guys who get hurt. I mean, look at uh, Finn Balor. He won the championship and he got hurt. And he, the guy's like in his 20s. So, Taker's pushed through a lot of injuries over the years. So, and he continues to keep going. So, who knows? But he's... He's more agile than a lot of younger guys. I mean, he's got a he's got a gym in his house. He's got, you know, not just, you know, like a weight machine and everything. He's got everything in his house. And the guy that delivered it said he's only delivered stuff like that to an actual gym. What does that tell you? Somebody, that stuff's expensive. So he's not going to spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on all that equipment if he's not going to use it. So if he's if he was just gonna just you know just retire and stay home, he wouldn't have bought all that stuff. So I mean, when he came back last year to face Bray Wyatt, he is he is freaking jacked now. I mean, he looks better than he did back in '04 when he came ba first came back as the Dead Man after the uh, American uh, Badass persona. So. I think he's got plenty left in the tank. It's all in when he wants to f actually fully hang it up. But, you know, that's his decision. You can't make that decision for him. You can't say, oh, he's old, this, this, this that. So, I mean, there's a lot of these younger guys that they get hurt all the time. Look at Seth Rollins. He's hurt again. He's He's my age. He's 30. And somebody that's more than 20 years older than you is in better shape than you are. So. Then, just because uh, the, there's other people's favorite uh, superstars are younger doesn't, doesn't mean they're in better shape. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But... Another uh, thing that people don't seem to realize is that uh, Sting, even though last year he claimed he retired, he still didn't get that surgery because that surgery would have ended everything where he could not get back in the ring. He still wants a match against The Undertaker. Now, Sting is 56, okay, but... Again, he's still in better shape than a lot of the younger guys. Maybe not in good, as good a shape as Taker's in, but he's in good enough shape where they can put on a really good match. But a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to see that. Well, I was like, I want to see it. And we should have seen it at WrestleMania 31, but Triple H's ego got in the way. And he wanted the match with Sting, and he couldn't. He couldn't even put over Sting. He had to be the winner. So, you know, that's, that was stupid. That was a stupid decision. So, you refer, they were telling people what they what they wanted. They were like, oh, yeah, everybody wanted to see Sting tri face Triple H. I was like, yeah, maybe eventually. But if the one match that people wanted to see was Sting face The Undertaker, that's the one that everybody wanted to see. So, it could still happen. So, 
Sting came out and said not more than a couple months ago that the reason he didn't have that surgery is because he still wants that match with The Undertaker. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I would prefer to see that over the match with Cena because I've seen him wrestle Cena before. You know, he's wrestled them on SmackDown, he's wrestled them on Raw, he's wrestled them in a pay-per-view or two. Maybe not recently, but, you know, Cena's still the same guy. I mean, it's still John Cena no matter how you look at it. So. I mean, I've seen them uh, tag team with each other. I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to see Undertaker and Cena or even Undertaker and Brock Lesnar as tag team champions. Because they, they work well together, but that's not likely to happen. There's Brock Lesnar's on Raw, and, uh, and Taker's still a free agent. He hasn't signed with either uh, Raw or SmackDown yet, so be interesting to see where he goes. But I've been watching mainly SmackDown because that's where all the uh, most of the really good wrestlers are. I mean, uh, like the ones I don't like, like Rusev, the New Day, and Charlotte. All the annoying ones are on Raw. Quite frankly, I wish they traded the Miz to the the Miz to Raw, and then the Raw would have. All the annoying ones, but yeah, I'm, I don't. I haven't been watching Raw. I mean, I'll check the the results after the show, and near as I can tell, I don't miss anything. So, like I said, I'd be watching uh, TNA if I got the channel, but I don't. So, whatever. Um. I'd like buy an old uh, like DVDs of like wrestling shows. Like I found a, uh, well, I got a this one here. It's a old WWF Attitude Era one. This is uh, the Undertaker, the Phenom. It's a uh, it's out of print, of course. It's the old uh, WWF scratch logo on it. Which was, uh, they had to get rid of due to a lawsuit from World Wildlife Fund. Which I don't understand. I mean, uh, they waited until, like, um, when the Attitude Era was starting to go into the Ruthless Aggression Era, then they decided to make a stink about it. They were... They're like, oh, we, we're World Wildlife Fund. We've had this uh, abbreviation longer than you have. I'm like, so? But, yeah, I remember when all that switched over, the World Wrestling Federation came W uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. So, yeah, no, well, whatever. And the thing is, is that if you watch... Uh, if you go buy DVDs, uh, you'll notice that the Scratch logo is uh, blurred out. It's blurred out in the ring if somebody's wearing a WWF Attitude shirt. Then that's blurred out and it's annoying as fuck. So, I mean, I have I have some tapes I found free um, on the side of the road where my friend lived. Uh, I think he actually put them out there himself, but... A couple of years ago, and they're uh, from the Attitude Era. They're recorded tapes, it's like uh, Raw is War, and like some of the old pay-per-views, like In Your House, and uh, I can't remember the ones I got, but I got I got some good ones. I got the episode of Raw where uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Goes out well one of the one of the ones where Stone Cold Steve Austin goes after McMahon, and he fires that little gun that says "Bang 316" on it. Funnier than hell. 
But yeah, I got that full episode with the original logos because it was when it was originally recorded. And I actually watched the uh, commercials because the commercials were a lot better than they are now. I mean, the commercials now are freaking stupid. Um, it's like uh, I don't really drink a lot of Pepsi. It's not really my favorite. It's not my favorite drink. But, I mean, I did buy a Crystal Pepsi yesterday. Those are pretty good. Um, but they had this Pepsi commercial back in 1996, and it had uh, a song by this man, Mr. Hank Williams, called "Your Cheating Heart," and uh, this guy that works for uh, Coca-Cola is delivering the Coca-Cola and uh, he tries to get a Pepsi and the shelf collapses and all the uh, Pepsi is on the floor yeah, it's kinda funny cause the, the Coke's in the next color you know the cans of Coke are laughing at him and then it's got his song Your Cheating Heart playing in the background so you're like Your Cheating Heart will tell on you but I thought that was cool. Like like I said, they had better commercials back then than they do now. I mean, the you know, commercials now are just, you know, they, they don't really have intelligent people making them anymore. But uh, commercials in like the uh, 90s and early 2000s actually made, made you want to go out and buy the product. Like if you saw... Like I said, a commercial like that, or old uh, commercial about like RC Cola. I mean, that was that they actually sponsored uh, at least one WWE paper or WWF pay per view. I'm not sure if I got that one or not, but it was like one of the main sponsors. But that's pretty cool. But. Yeah, some pe some people have tried to tell me they're like, oh, they have better wrestling now than they uh, did in the Attitude Era. I was like, no, they didn't. The Attitude Era was the the greatest. It started well, it kind of started, I'd say, unofficially late uh, later two thousand or ninety seven, and went through uh, early part of two thousand two or mid two thousand two. Maybe even later than that because I I had a tape from when they uh, switched over first switched over to the WWE logo and uh, it still said it had the Attitude Era thing on it so went through a good portion of 2002 at least but the Attitude Era was they had everything I mean if you've seen uh, WrestleMania X7. It's probably the most uh, stacked WrestleMania. I mean, they had a gimmick battle royale. Each each uh, match was like it could have been a main event. The actual main event was uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock for the championship. But the Triple H versus The Undertaker, the first time they faced each other, was really good. That could have easily been a main event. Uh, Shane McMahon versus his father. Vince McMahon or Mr. McMahon for in a street fight that could have been a uh, main event easy. Um, can't remember all the matches, but um, China versus I want to say Trish Stratus or somebody like that. It was like one of the last times that uh, China was in the ring because they decided to. Uh, Basically, kick her out because Triple H decided to be with Stephanie McMahon instead. So, um, you could say that they eventually brought along her premature death. She died earlier this year and uh, sent, it sent her uh, life into a tailspin that she never really recovered from. So. It's one thing to decide you don't want to be with somebody, but WWE has a uh, tendency to 
punish people for like what their spouse or significant other has done or is doing. They did the same thing with the AJ because of uh, because of CM Punk leaving. I mean, well, CM Punk had every right to leave. I mean, all he wanted was to main event WrestleMania once, one time. They wouldn't give it to him, so he walked. You know, whatever. And, but, you know, punishing uh, his, sorry, um, excuse me, uh, punishing his girlfriend, well, became his wife, they're married now, but punishing her for some, for, for that is stupid. Now they're doing the same thing to, uh, Paige because of, uh, they had a dis disagreement with, uh, Alberto Del Rio and he left. I mean, she might as well just leave too. They're gonna be like that. That's sinking pretty low. It's like uh, that's re that's really the reason that uh, the the Bellas got such a push is because of Brie Bellas married to Daniel Bryan, and uh, Nikki Bellas with John Cena, and Nikki Bellas the. Uh, now the longest reigning Divas title, which is now the woman's title, or Divas champion. So, what's that tell you? I mean, so, you know, whatever. I think it's a uh, kind of a stupid reason myself. I mean, you should uh should have to work for it, but this is ones that have been there there longer that have never even had an opportunity. I mean, that's why some people have left the company is because they don't they're not given anything. Like uh Damien Sandow. They released him cuz uh you know, they couldn't figure out what to do with them, so. Same thing with uh, Cody Rhodes. Same thing with uh, Justin Gabriel. And then they bring back one, ones that never did anything in the first place, like Jinder Mahal. I mean, what the hell is the point of bringing that guy back? He never did anything. I'd rather see uh, wrestlers with talent than, you know, watch a bunch of wrestlers that don't have talent and are just there because they're too stupid to fire them. Or release them, rather. It's like, uh, they're giving uh, Heath Slater some somewhat of a push. He's a guy that's been there for a while. He yeah, has a little talent, but you know he's nothing really special. Justin Gabriel was more, uh, much more talented guy from the Nexus, and uh, he was never really given a good chance. Because once uh, Nexus broke up, then yeah, was, that was it. That destroyed a lot of guys' careers. The way that was booked was, you know, nonsense. It really should have gone on further than, than that. But John Cena has the tendency to uh, bury people like that, and that's what happened there. I mean, that's why uh, Bray Wyatt's career hasn't been what it's uh, what it should have been because he really should have put Bray Wyatt over at WrestleMania 30, but he didn't. Then uh, there was the last man standing match a month or so later between the two of them, and he didn't put him over them e there either. So, really, uh, his career, Bray Wyatt's career has been okay, but he very seldom wins a feud. I mean, he had a he had a good match with the Undertaker though at last, last year's WrestleMania, but he got he had, Bray Wyatt actually got hurt beforehand, so. It wasn't quite as good as it could have been. 
then him and Kane fought, uh, I think it was, well, they fought the Wyatts last year at Survivor Series. That was good. That was done pretty well. That, that worked out pretty well. I mean, I like the uh, tribute that they, they did for Taker because it was his uh, 25th anniversary since he's been in the company. He deb- debuted Survivor Series November 22nd, 1990. Although he actually um, appeared on an episode of... Uh, old school WWF superstars beforehand but that was aired later it was taped but it was aired later so but he's been in the uh, company for almost 26 years so he's been around for quite a while um One thing I'm uh it's getting boring about wrestling is that um well if you ever read some of the comments on like uh Facebook and stuff like that I mean you get these people that don't know what the hell they're talking about these people a lot of these people probably haven't uh watched it very long some of them don't even know what the attitude era was or is um, it's uh another another thing is is that um there's other uh, wrestling uh shows like I'm doing right here um I do it on YouTube to get more exposure I guess I could do one on uh that local uh well, it's a local TV station I can do it through, but honestly, how many people are going to see that? So, figure out, well, this is my first one, I'll probably do more, I don't know when. So I'm not able to do the, because I'm busy a lot, so I don't, I'm not able to film these as much as I would like. But this is the first episode of Russell Chat, and um... I'll probably have uh, guests like my friend Tyler and another another friend Marty and other other people on here every so often. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this up for now, but yeah, this is just the first episode to get it off the ground. But I will probably. Uh, play some music and I'll show you some of my other wrestling stuff at a later in the future episodes so I hope you all have a nice day and uh, see you again next time